Hey everybody, Chris here, and I'm excited to have with me Israel Newman. Israel runs the beta program for Universal Robots, and he started off with support, but he ended up managing the entire program. Israel serves teams like product management, quality assurance, support, anybody in the company, you name it. He's got the insights to help everybody improve their products. Israel, thanks for joining us. Now, I'd love to hear the story about how you started the beta program. Well, thanks for having me, Chris. Um, I always, uh, you know, like chatting with you over the years and talking about the beta program at Universal Robots. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a long story, so I'll try to do it justice. Uh, so I've been with UR now a little bit over six years, six and a half years, um, and it's always been um facing externally with partners and developers that work with our our suite of products so what we are we're an industrial robotics company that makes six axis robots for manufacturing um could be like picking and placing welding different kinds of uh, industrial automation applications um and we started the beta program i want to say we started investigating back in 2021 uh, and then officially uh, kicked it off um, in 2022, um, but it all started with the aspect of managing our partners and our developers that work on our system. So we have a pretty open architecture on our robot. Um, so it's a big hardware product, but also a lot of big software component to it. Um, it's very open source in a way that they can develop on our system to make solutions for um, their customers, which are usually businesses. Excuse me. So um, my role at the time was kind of helping them figure out how they can use our system. So they they had their business, they knew their product really well, and they wanted to integrate with us um, for these solutions. So they had to figure out, okay, not just on the hardware side, how can I integrate with Universal Robots, but also how can our software integrate? So to the customer, it looks like you know one seamless solution that uses both our robot and their product to solve one problem. Um, that took a lot of uh, alignment with several of their teams and several of our teams. And of course we push out updates regularly. So there's a big headache on, okay, how are we gonna keep our growing network of partners up to date with changes that we're doing in our system? And we had this looming big uh, platform update that was coming in the at the time of when we started the program in a year or two. So, you know, we started investigating, okay, like what's, what's something we can do to make sure they're ready and make sure that we're ready for this big change. So we started looking up, um, potential solutions that's where we found you guys at center code and um we really liked the product and we knew that we had to do a more like professional official program around this uh if we we're going to manage this large group of partners so to give like a, a context to how big it was we were working with over 300 companies globally so it's very important that we are able to manage uh, in a scalable way, you know, when we have software updates, uh, communicate those changes. And then also, uh, you know, a plus was getting feedback to make sure that we were ready and that the, qual the quality of the software met the needs of these developers. So it all started back then. Um, it seems like forever, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, a couple years, two, three years, not too much, but... But that's kind of the 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 root of all the the beta program stuff that's been going on at Universal Robots. Yeah, and how did how did you stumble into it? Why you? Why did you run the program? Yeah, I think uh, I think originally it was someone in our product market uh, management organization had a demo scheduled with you guys, and they're looking at it from a different lens. Um, but I caught whiff of uh, that this demo was happening with a tool that could be used to capture feedback. And right away, you know, I got very excited into joining that conversation. Um, I think the use case for me was really big because we did spend a lot of time traveling to these partners. So we got to build relationships with them. And I knew their frustration 
of not knowing, you know, when our next software update was going to be, you know, what the scope of that software was going to be. And we did our best, right? It just was hard to manage in a scalable way that communication out to so many um, individuals. Then we also had the problem where, you know, you could tell somebody in the suite, C-suite level of a company, you know, this is what's coming, but how do you make sure that that company then communicates that to all their software developers in the correct way and all the testers and everybody who's going to be using the product um, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, how do you communicate to that level? So it was right away, I saw a big opportunity to partner up with a uh, product mark. Uh, uh, I keep saying product marketing, product management, and uh, leverage this tool um, to create a more formal beta program. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to hear about the like the early days. You, you're a couple years in now, a little more developed, but I'd love to hear about like those some of those growing pains, those things of of just getting started. Like, what did you have to go through to get to where you are today? Yeah, it was definitely uh, very different than we are today, and. Uh, it was a lot scarier. I think there's a risk, right? That it wasn't going to work as I had envisioned it. I always knew, you know, it's a big missing piece of the puzzle to what we had at the time. So I, there's there's no doubt that I that there's a need for it and that it would be very beneficial to their company. But it was challenging to kind of communicate that to every every all the stakeholders um, and let them see the big picture of how you know having a beta program using a tool like center code could help um, in a scalable way us manage such a large ecosystem of companies we work with. Um, but I think you know early on it was a lot of grassroots stuff. We had to um, work with people, explain the the concepts, and it was a lot. A lot of more went into buy-in than the than nowadays. Where nowadays everyone's familiar with the program, they know the benefits of what what running a beta test means specifically for us here at this company. Um, where before it was a lot of convincing people to help me help you kind of thing, um, which is great. You know, everyone wants to be. At the end of the day, we all have you know very similar goals. Like make sure we get quality software releases quality products out to our partners um but we it was hard to align um on the lower level stuff it's like okay well in order to do that we should probably test you know for a few weeks um before we release the product and they already had their timeline set in place so it was a lot of a lot of convincing them that this was actually going to help them and not slow them down or get them off track with uh, you know the work they had already pre-planned uh, previously. Mm -hmm. Now, I have a, a way like I, I like to mention convincing as almost like internal marketing, right? Like, how are we going to convince this group that they need to or should be doing it? maybe doing beta a certain way or, or they should be investing in the program and getting some more attention into it. So I'd love to hear some of your, your tactics on how, how are you marketing your program and yourself internally to convince all of your stakeholders? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I think it's, it changes depending on, um, you know, the stakeholders, but I would say it kind of reminds me early on to when we were, um, trying to convince the, you know, product organization, both R and D and product mar uh, management that, you know, this was a good idea to have it more formalized and structure it in the launch, you know, cycle of a product. Um, I would bring up a lot of quotes we had through scouring like Reddit or other public forums and just, um, First, I had to, you know, convince them we had a problem. So, um, you know, I had spent a lot of time dialoguing with these companies. So I kind of had a gut feeling, but it, it's it's one thing for me to know and then try to communicate that to our developer team who doesn't necessarily um, speak with our external partners or customers uh, frequently. So I, I brought up a lot of quotes that were, you know, around our quality compatibility with uh, these third-party devices and um, you know also um, a lot of like historic support cases where we would run into you know this person didn't know 
that they needed an update or that there was an update and they you know a lot of questions coming up on oh is this fix getting implemented if so when so it was a lot of digging and trying to analyze you know this is the actual problem we're trying to solve and i think what was nice is a lot of a lot of people there wasn't a lot of pushback cuz they were really interested in knowing what the customers were dealing with what our developers uh partner developers were dealing with and i think there wasn't a good tool for them to use to get that uh, besides like flying and visiting customers which isn't you know super budget friendly so <laughs> it was nice for them because um i remember my first few trips uh to work with r d there were a lot of questions with like oh how is this specific feature that I had worked on in the past being used by by these uh partner um companies and and to me it was surprising and you know i work with these partners every day and I'm like oh yeah i can tell you exactly you know what they've told me um, so that's when I realized there's also a communication that uh, improvement we could do at Universal Robots to let our developers know, hey, you know, the things you're actually working on do matter. And there's a lot of people out there that, you know, care about it working well and want to see it keep improving. So I think it also, because of that, you know, there's a lot of buy-in on the developer level in R&D where they actually wanted to see and ask questions and and know you know, what the gaps were on what they're working on every day. Yeah, it's interesting to me. Like what, what I heard you say, and I'll repeat it back to, to clarify, is there was a gap in, in knowledge and access to that information. And by having something like this, this program, I know you are a resource to be able to amplify it back. Like it was bringing that voice into development and giving the communication of what customers are saying to those development teams and to those product teams where it might not have been there previous. Exactly. Yeah. At, at least not to the same scale. There's a lot of people that, that weren't, um, that were asking those questions on, okay, how is this thing I worked on for, you know, X number of months or years, uh, doing out in the field. And, uh, yeah, it was shocking for me to not, to think that they didn't have that information because I like I would put myself in their shoes if I had worked on something you know countless hours I would also want to know you know after the fact you know was it worth it should we keep you know making it better um was it a bus should I move into like working on focusing on something else so I could 100 percent understand that um so it also helped me um you know, gain better like rapport with them, I guess. We are trying to solve a very similar problem now where I, I really wanted them to know the feedback from from the people using the software. And they were also really wanted to know also. So it was easy to kind of bridge that and figure out, okay, so we both want the same thing. Let's figure out a way that, you know, we can make it work for everybody. Yeah, I definitely have some old war stories about we had a beta program and we'd, we'd, we'd bring the data to teams and we'd get a lot of pushback. The, one of the challenges with, with beta is that you're kind of creating work, right? Like <laughs> you find the bug or you find enhancements that need to happen. And you, you're just giving that, that getting that data from your, your customers or from users and bringing that in development. But it is, it's creating more work, more things for them to review. Sometimes you're, you know, you're calling it ugly and they they've got some stuff that they need to improve and that often causes walls to go up right like where they're mm. maybe a little bit resistant to re receive that feedback and i love what you said about like it's we're, we're we have the same goal we're, we're trying to solve this problem and i have access to information that can help you which in turn helps me which in turn helps our customers so i i think those that's a very powerful story um, to tell. Yeah, and it's that. it's a very unique role within our company to you know we created it. Um, so my my official title is beta program manager, and um, I don't think that's a common industry um, term. Uh, so so it's weird because it's like a weird little uh, spot where. You know, I'm not actually developing our products, so I, I kind of have to make sure I communicate 
you know, the needs of our, our customers to our developers. And I also have to help our developers, uh, you know, communicate the value they're trying to give the, the partners or the testers um, externally. So we, it, it's kind of a weird, weird spot, but, uh, you know, I've been doing it now for a couple of years and I think it's, it's really unique because you get to see both, both sides of it and kind of, um, interesting because they both want to help each other out they just need to figure out a way to make it easy for everyone to to work together yeah great all right and i'd I'd like to shift it just a little bit so we've been talking about we'll say convincing but really you know shedding light on stuff and we're, we're talking mostly about the teams that we interact with that have to improve that product so developers product managers um maybe some user experience teams now how, what are some tactics that you have to go higher than that to say executive levels? You have a, a beta program. There's an investment to that beta program. For example, you, the tools that you use, time, products, like those are all things that go into this investment. So what tactics do you have to get buy-in from an executive level? Yeah, no, that's a great question because I think it's it's very different, but it's very much needed to have a successful program. Um, not the only tactic, but um, you know, one thing that I, that I like to use recently was now that it's more established, and I work closely um, on the developer side with our product uh, management team to show value there. Um, this one time is like, a, I remember this story where our R and D's in Denmark. So I was in Denmark and the, uh, the president of the company was getting coffee and we were all sitting around and, uh, one of the product managers came up to me and was trying to say, oh, do you know, the program is great. You know, we're, we're doing X, Y, Z with it. We got this feedback and we're gonna, um, get this other feedback in a year and we're going to compare it and we're going to it's going to help us you know improve our features make sure we're on the right direction and i stopped him you know halfway through and and i said whoa whoa, whoa, wait one second let's go walk next to the president and tell him together (laughs) so i think it's it's good to to for me to say it's it's great and brings value but then also um you know all the different teams using it to also be saying the same message. So I think that's, that's really important. And I also really like to highlight that in uh, more formal presentations and say, okay, this is our internal user um, profiles. You know, these are the teams using it. These are the projects we're running so that they can see, you know, how influential it is in our products and how many different kinds of uh, teams and different product, um, types are being used uh, to in our beta program. And it's also cool to show, you know, the size of the community. So with Center Code, it makes it easy to manage um, large scale tests. So it's easy for me to go in and, and get the data and say, you know, this is how our community has grown over the years. This is how engaged our community is. And this is, you know, the kind of feedback we've been getting and uh, it's always good. We've only had a few major tests, but it's always good to show like the big flagship product and say, you know, these are our key learnings after the fact and present that and say, especially now that we've got buy-in to start the program. Now I want to keep showing value and saying, okay, this is how the program has impacted the roadmap, or this is how we've, um, caught some quality issues before launch or verified some assumptions. Um, So I think stuff like that is always, always important. Yeah. Um, I I know we met before and showing those numbers, telling those stories, like what is your, what's the tool that you use? Are you using a presentation? Is it a email, like uh, an update, a Slack message or a Teams message? What, What are you using? I guess I'm old school in the way where I think the presentations and when I can do it in person, I try because I think uh, it's hard. That's one of my biggest challenges actually is trying to communicate, um, you know, tell the full story of how the beta program, 
you know, is, is doing and how it's beneficial. So I think the more I can be in person and show like the, the facts and figures, but put a story to it and say why, why it's important. There's always these, these anecdotes here and there where we get um, either through interviews from people participating in the beta program, or we get, uh, you know, text survey response, which is hard to just throw in a slide and, and glom, you know, go by. So there's a lot of wins in there where, you know, we will get quotes like, oh, this is like, shows that you guys are committed to quality and that you're very innovative and you know there's sometimes their business a lot of times their business depends on you know that we make quality products too so they're extremely uh, bought in and you know love the fact that we're including these companies in a program that lets them be our roadmap who give feedback and we're active in answering questions so there's a lot of good anecdotes and little stories that we can also show um you know because i think i think data is a little tricky where um you know the data could say we're doing great because our community is growing but if we can tie that also to the voice of those testers that also you know say the same thing where like this is valuable this is useful i think that helps paint the the big picture and then um uh, I deliver those better in person, but, um, you know, I always send reports on, on the status of things. Uh, I always question how many people actually read those, but, <laughs> but yeah, I think there's multiple ways to do it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now here, I'm going to experiment with something on the podcast. I have a series of rapid fire questions and rapid will be, um, a loose explanation of it. So I'm going to hit a couple questions for you. Uh, and I'd love your your quick take on them, okay? Okay, sounds good. Okay. All right. Describe beta in one to three words. Mm. Beta in one to three words. I would say... Um, essential. Um, and I would say... Yeah, maybe I'll say essential essential oh. to product launches yeah that's that's like i think i think you can't it has to be there in some way some form or function so i think the the more structured and managed the better all right most challenging thing to do in beta mm, besides everything let's see <laughs> i would say for me it's communicating the results um we don't have issues with re recruiting because the Partners are very tight, buy, bought into our product and and depend on it functioning and using it in order to present a combined solution. So my main issue is, um, you know, communicating the data in a clean and easy way for um, our product management teams to to digest and uh, take action. Easiest thing to do in beta. Um tell other people what to do you know so i think uh you know since i don't build the stuff you know i just gotta make sure it gets built in time so i think managing the managing the uh timelines to make sure that, that that's also um sorry i know this should be faster but it's also yeah, good sure. that uh um i think one unintended consequence is when you get ready for a beta you are also kind of checking off a lot of the stuff you need for launch so it helps us to make sure you know documentation is ready and you know our support for the product is, re is ready enough and that um you know our release notes and everything is there to help the tester um so i think i think getting all those teams to to pull in the same direction and making sure that you know deliverables make it in on time i think that's that's easy because the uh, it's outside of scope of the work I do. So it's just, you know, telling people what to do, I guess. <laughs> One misconception about beta. Um, I would say that the product doesn't have to be fully complete. Um, I've seen a lot of people want to run betas where the product is more of an alpha or less, less, uh, more prototypey. Um, so I think, I think in my opinion, a beta should be very 
very close to what you're going to go to market with. And I think sometimes, you know, everything is lumped into beta, like research, prototype. Um, so I think that I think that's at least one of them. Okay. What is your favorite thing about beta? Um, my favorite thing is, uh, you know, it's a way for te- for me to tell our own organization that we can improve without, you know, it being my own words. So I like that part of it. <laughs> Coffee or tea? I would say tea. I was a huge coffee drinker and then uh, uh, I had to back off uh, <laughs> recently. So I'm really into chai right now. Okay. How do you unwind? Uh, actually, uh, I'm a competitive weightlifter too. So I, for me, it's, you know, going to the gym and, uh, lifting weights. I think that's the way, um, uh, to relieve stress for sure. All right. And what are you watching right now on, on um, TV or on streaming services or anything? Well, I'll, I'll blame my wife on this one, but, uh, you know, love is blind on Netflix is pretty, uh, pretty interesting right now. Uh, That's got us pretty hooked. (laughs) All right. Last one. Best piece of advice you've been given. Um, yeah, surrounding beta or in life. That's a pretty deep question. (laughs) Um, I think, Ooh, let's see. I think, uh, you know, start with the end in mind is a big one. It's in a lot of books, a lot of different podcasts I listen to. And it's mostly remembering what the main goal is that you're doing. Uh, I think that makes it, um, makes the little questions and the little uh, tasks that come up um, a lot easier to make decisions and to manage. So I think it's always important to know, you know, where you're going, whether it be like uh, the beta program or just, you know, your day-to-day life stuff, you know, what's important and what matters. All right. It's been great talking with Israel. I really appreciate you coming on. I think the viewers are going to have a great time listening to it. Um, Thanks. Thanks for having me.